seen it all yet, you know. There's more? Mm -hmm. And this is special. Come here, sir. <laughs> Open the door and shut your eyes. And you're going to have one big surprise. Ah. Now, watch your step. Oh, the steps? Yes, you're going to get some steps in a minute. Here. Where? We've got oh, two wait, wait, flights wait, 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 of stairs. Out. Yeah, here you go. And there's a landing, and then there's another flight of stairs. Be careful, because you're naturally clumsy. <laughs> Reminds me of the time you fill up the escalator at Bloomingdale. <laughs> <laughs> right, here's uh, six stairs. There you go. One. Two, three, <laughs> four, five, and the floor. Right on? Yeah, yeah, there you are. Right, here, you just stand here. Now, don't cheat. Open your eyes. know it was here until after I looked at the rest of the house and decided to take it. <laughs> there must be something wrong with it. Uh -uh. Is it expensive? No, nope, they're giving it away. What did they say? Why it was so cheap? Yes, well, maybe you wouldn't think it was, but compared to prices in the States, it's pretty good. Hello? I'm Terry Lawrence. Mrs. Terry Lawrence. I'm your nearest neighbor. One of the men let me in. These are for you. Uh -huh. We're Hank and Anne Apprentice, I know. Around here, everyone knows everything. Me first. I'm very glad to meet you. How do you do? Hello. Oh, these are quite lovely. Thank you very much, Mrs. Lawrence. Terry. Well, Terry, I think you've earned yourself a drink. What'll it be? I must put these in water right away. How do you remember what we did with the ice bucket? I'll bring it. Scotch or scotch? <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh oh, glasses, glasses. I know I saw some glasses. Corner cupboard, first and second shelves. I know this place pretty well. Dick was a friend of mine. Have you found them? Yep. Dick? Your predecessor. Uh. Dick Parker. Welcome to England. To a charming neighbor. Mm. Your husband, where is he? I'm divorced. We've come to celebrate your arrival in our midst. I'm Luther Ames, and this is Helen. Uh, were you very fond of it, Mrs. Prentice? Don't take any notice of him. We thought we'd be your first visitors, and we brought you a picnic to stop you having to cook. Champagne and caviar. Well, it's very kind of you both. You're not the first, though. Terry Lawrence is... Downstairs, talking to your husband. In that case, we'd better rescue him before it's too late. <laughs> I am sorry about the ice bucket. Fortunately, the champagne is chilled. Hank's in the basement, just through there. Oh, it's all right. I know my way to the playroom. And where did you two meet? Oh, I met Anne in New York. She was working in the same office building that I was, and we used to bump into each other in the elevators. And her parents, uh, they live in London. Uh, no, no, no. She's as much a stranger here as I am. Oh. Hank, I want you to meet two more of our neighbors. Luther and Helen Ames. Hello there. Hello, Hank. How nice to meet you. Thank you. Hello, Terry. Hello. How do you do, Hank? Hello. Ah, oh, Terry, dear. Mm. Ahead of the rest of us, as usual. 
I was going to phone you to say where I was going. Really, I was. Yes, of course you were. With Terry as a neighbour, you never feel neglected or lonely. <laughs> Toast for the caviar. Unless you'd rather eat it with a spoon. Oh, please, Mrs. Ames, let me do that. Uh, the idea of this visit, my dear Anne, was to save you trouble, not to create more. If I'd known you were coming here, I'd have phoned you and asked for a lift. But you live only just across the road, my dear. You don't mind mixing champagne with scotch, do you? Just this once. Here's to you. To our new neighbours. You want to sit down here, hon? <coughs> It's just like the old days. <laughs> what old days? With Dick Parker, your predecessor. A close friend of Terry's. But you two never met poor Dick. No, it beats me why this Dick Parker ever left a house like this. He had to. And why was that? He died, my dear. Rather suddenly. About three months ago. It was a terrible shock. Scotch. Oh, the scotch, Mr. Prentice, is over here. Here's the door. It's to save people like me searching for it. Oh, uh, Matthew Dyestel. How do you do? How do you do? Good morning, Mrs. Prentice. Luther told us yours got smashed. We were given six of the brutes' wedding presents. You'll be doing us a favor. They'll only start to breed. <laughs> We're the Redfords, David and Susan. This is a housewarming present. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I really can't get over it. I mean, everybody's been so kind. <laughs> My wife warned me to expect the legendary English reserve. Oh, myself, I prefer the legend. <laughs> oh, no, everybody's so friendly around here. I'm a writer. No, I have absolutely no objection to drink in its place, but its place is my place. They're living here. Parties by day, parties by night. Everybody gives parties. Hmm, that's so terrible? Well, parties means free drink, and that's something I can't resist. And free drink means too much, and too much means I get plastered, and I can't work in the mornings. <laughs> You'll have to come over and have a drink with us one day soon. Oh, I'd like to. Good. Your change, sir. Oh, thank you. <sighs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> that fabulous playroom. Dick virtually lived down there. <laughs> so do we. We went to a party there just before. Before it happened. He died rather suddenly, didn't he? Yes, he did. Was he a good friend of yours? Yes. A very good friend, wasn't he, David? Mm. Isn't this divine? It's pretty, isn't it? It's Victorian. I tell you what, I'll take you antiquing. I'll show you where I got it. Oh, I'd love that. Tell me something. When Helen and Luther came over to visit us, Mm. There was this real weirdy in the background, just standing around, kind of shaven head. Oh, Brother Martin. Who? Luther's manservant. He used to be a monk. He left his monastery two or three years ago. Luther gave him a job. A monk? Luther's very religious. Underneath all that gaiety and charm, he's a very serious person. His own kind of religion, of course, not the orthodox, church-going kind. Come on, I'll show you the rest of the house. Oh, isn't it attractive? Where did you get all these lovely things? Well, the bed, believe it or not, I found in the Portobello Road. All the rest of the things I got in that little shop I was telling you about. Well, the one you're taking me to? Yes. Hello, Hello home. Luther, we're in here. You're supposed to be next door, electing Hank to the golf club, didn't you know? Yes, Terry, dear, I did know, but it so happens that Helen finds Hank even more attractive than I do. She has decided to second the nomination while I walk the young wife home. <laughs> yes, I'm there. <laughs> I'm there. Once on the back. Second is by Helen 
things. You are. Like a drink, Helen? <laughs> yeah, thanks. You know what? You remind me a lot of Dick. Same colouring. How old was Dick Parker then? About your age. How old are you? You're 28. I know. I asked Anne. <laughs> How old are you? I'm four years younger than Hank. Why? 24. Best possible age for a wife. Uh, somebody else's wife, I mean. A combination of the unattainable and the desirable. Very tantalizing. And you like to be tantalized? I like... I believe the only things worth having in life are the things which are permanently denied to us. Like what, for instance? Tell me, Hank's job with an oil company, you said? Yes. Is it going to keep me here for long? It's a three-year appointment, but it could be longer. Or shorter. I doubt that. He's only just been promoted. They're not likely to move in for a while yet. Good. Makes you slightly less unattainable, doesn't it? You think so? Hope you're not going to be bored living here. There they are. Our two spouses. Having a sneaky little drink. What's your handicap, Hank? I've been having a little gossip with your husband. What about poor Dick Parker? Everyone keeps on about Dick Parker. Poor Dick this, poor Dick that. How young, how tragic. No one's told me how he died. Luther? But I thought you both knew that the lawyer told you. Told us what? He killed himself, I'm afraid. He hanged himself. He took the punch bag off the hook and hanged himself. There I am, right where you're standing. They should have told you. Someone, the lawyer should have warned you. Stranger, honey. Someone we never even met. He died in this house. Not died, hanged himself in that room. Nothing you can do about it. So try not to think. We can move. Yeah. We could. I can't live here. Not now. If you really want to, I mean really, then we'll look for another house. Do you want to go on living here? I'm just not sure we can afford another move on top of the first, but... If you want to, I'll make out somehow. Why don't you give it a try first? I wish they hadn't told us. <clears throat> better to know. Well, anyway, if we do move, we'll never find neighbors as nice as these. <laughs> Salome, why did Terry pick me to be Salome? Why not? Salome was a lovely, clever young girl who could get her own way with men just by us. Dancing. Mm. Let's dance, <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, it's just Luther's idea. Yeah, he says the writers are even better at hiding their feelings than actors. No one knows what's really here. Is he right? Can you always hide your feelings? 
Well, I'm a great deal better at hiding them than you are. That's why I'm feeling so obvious, Ed. Well, you're thinking what a handsome couple your wife and Helen's husband make dancing together. <laughs> Just allow me and it should be granted whatever you want. Anything, literally anything. I would love some supper. Mm. You're having a good time? Mephistopheles has just offered me my every wish. Is there anything we particularly need just now? How about somebody's head on a plate? Anyone particular, Hank? I'll get you some supper. Here we are. Salome and Romeo. Romeo, you see, was the lover husband who turned out to be just a bit too young. What's that supposed to mean? No, Terry's idea, not mine. She, you see, is Juliet, and very fetching, too. Like all the best Juliets, most effective when played by a slightly older woman. Whose idea was it for you to dress like that? Mine, dear boy, mine. It suits me, don't you think? Haven't you put on a little weight, Ham? Oh, no, it doesn't show that much, does it? You're not going to have a baby, are you? Luther wouldn't like that. He'd be very angry if he thought you were going to have a baby. I'm not, but even if I were, what's it got to do with Luther? Didn't you know? They had a baby. About two years ago. He died. Just before the christening. Luther and I had an affair, you know. Please, Terry. Well, everyone round here knows about it. Helen was very kind about it. She said she was glad that Luther and I liked each other so much. She knew how lonely I must be after the divorce. But it's over now. He thought I was drinking too much. He wanted me to pull myself together. Well, it wasn't, Anne. Really, I wasn't. Somehow, he managed not to see me for weeks on end. Just living up the road, he managed not to see me. So now I am drinking too much. So he was right after all. I wish I could get away. Then why don't you go away for a holiday? Meet some new people. I can't. They wouldn't let me. Not on my own, I mean. Who wouldn't? Who's <laughs> Rena Helen? Who? You don't understand, Anne. You don't know. Listen, Terry. I don't know what's worrying you. But if you want to tell me about it, then tell me. Then ask Luther what really happened to Dick Parker. And if he won't tell you, I will. Oh, there you are. Terry, darling, the crops are about to leave. Nan's got nothing to drink, and I don't know where the whiskey is. I hate to butt in, but it is your party. With you in two minutes. You're coming, Anne. Yes, of course. Not dancing. So Lome took one veil off each time she danced. She took them off herself. You ready? I was trying to persuade your wife to give me one last dance. Yeah, so I saw. Terry, I'll come over first thing and help you tidy up. No, you will not. Coffee you can have, but this mess will leave. My help comes over in the afternoon. I tell you what, we can visit that antique shop you tell me about. Yes. What a good idea. I'll come and join you. No, you won't. Anne and I are going to have a little gossip. <laughs> it's a sensational party, Terry. Thanks very much. <laughs> it was pretty sensational. You, dear husband, are going to have a terrible hangover. Goodbye, Hank. Goodbye. Goodbye, Anne. Goodbye. See you in the morning. Yes. Bye. Bye. You're, you're not going yet, are you, Luther? I've only just started. You owe me a dance. 
kiss. Have a good day. See you later. Bye. Terry? Day at the office? What? Oh no, I've just been to see my agent. Yeah. This is to uh let him think that I've been busy. Old scripts. <laughs> well, I thought Anne put up a pretty good show at the inquest. How's she taking it? Uh, not too well, Matt. I made her stay in bed today. Well, you should have seen her in the witness box. Anybody else would have been in tears, including me. Helen told me that. And I wanted to be there, but I just couldn't take any more time away from work. They brought in an open verdict. What does that mean here? Uh, suicide or uh, accidental death. Matt, how do you accidentally take all the sleeping pills in a bottle? Well, she was very drunk, and it doesn't take very many... Well, uh, what does Anne feel about it? She wants to believe it was an accident. Well, isn't it better to let her believe that? Mm, yeah, I'm going to. I'm also getting rid of the house. That's just between the two of us. I haven't told anyone yet, including Anne. I just got an apartment in London. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, Luther won't like losing your boat so soon. Luther? Well, he's grown very fond of Anne. Oh, of you both. Hello, honey. <laughs> well, I didn't know you had visitors. Good evening, Hank. You're back nice and early, darling. Yeah, I caught an early train so I could get back to look after you. Guess I needn't have worried. That's a grapevine, Hank. I heard Anne was in bed. So you thought you'd join her? <laughs> he only came to bring me some flowers and get tea. It was very thoughtful of you, Luther. Oh, I'd better get along. Just a minute, Luther. Since you uh, know everything that goes on around here, if you happen to hear of somebody who would like to take this house over, it'll be vacant at the end of the month. But why did I you... I thought go... we discussed it already. You said you wanted to move. Or has something happened to make you want to change your mind? Well, I'll leave you two alone. Obviously, you've got a lot to talk about. Oh, thank you for the flowers. And my present. Will you thank Helen for me? Well, you can find your own way out. Of course. And I'll certainly keep my ears open for you. Cheerio. He was only trying to be nice to me. I could see that. You didn't have to be rude. Well, I thought under the circumstances I was extremely polite. What circumstances? Finding you entertaining him up here. Oh, come on, Hank. You're behaving as if you found us in bed together. Well, you damn nearly were. Oh, that's ridiculous. He came to try and cheer me up, that's all. But didn't think to bring his wife with him. apartment in town. We're moving in at the end of the month. I fixed everything up today. So you said. Well, I thought you'd be pleased. Oh. It'll mean leaving Luther. You'll have to put up with that. Luther is a friend of us both. Yeah, so's Helen, only we don't see so much of her. 
Are you suggesting there's something going on between me and Luther? Is there? No! Well, he's a very attractive man, so they tell me. Yes, he is, very. With plenty of free time to check on his girlfriends while their husbands are out working. Oh, that's right. Have you been seeing a lot of him? Yes. And you... Am I having an affair with Luther? Well, you think so, don't you? Well, you've no idea what it's like being here by myself. I haven't got any friends. Well, not my friends. And other Terry's. I can fall. Only that's all. <laughs> Well, it was a lot of fun. Is that it? I don't know what's happening to us. But I tell you one thing. The sooner we get away from here, the better for both of us. We're gonna miss you, Annie. We really are. Well, we'll come and see you. It's not far. Ah, further than you think. Once you start making friends in town, you'll forget about us country bumpkins in the back of the office. <laughs> all right. I here and now invite you all to our housewarming party in our new flat. Agreed. Um, time and date, Well, please. I have to ask Hank. Ah, you're trying to get out of it. <laughs> We're not even leaving for another week, Luther. Well, it's going to be dull not having you around to talk to. Well, come and visit. But why are you leaving? Oh, no, really. We told you. It's nothing to do with Luther, is it? Luther? Yeah, that <laughs> middle-aged Romeo that's chatting up your wife. You know, some men might be just slightly jealous. My dear Matt, if Luther is attracted to Anne, that's his business. Why should I be jealous? All right, all right. He's no threat for your concern, but... Don't underestimate him. Underneath that charming exterior lies a vicious, selfish... Now, Matt, who have you got your knife into now? You know what these writers are? Talk too much, write too little, and all of it's nonsense. But don't you think you've had enough already, Matt? Sorry, but when he's had one drink too many, he turns into an irresponsible idiot with an overworked imagination. Sure. You'll excuse me. Mm. Hank said things happen in threes. Well, as far as we're concerned, you're the third. First we lose Dick Parker. And poor Terry kills herself. You hardly got used to that, and you suddenly pack up and leave. Terry didn't kill herself. No, no official. She probably hoped someone would turn up and save her like last time. Last time? Well, she tried before, didn't you know? What happened? Luther walked in and found her in the bathroom. And there she was, full to the eyeballs with whiskey and barbiturates. That time they managed to bring her around. But why? She was such a lovely person. What made her so unhappy? Honey, the Redfords are leaving. Can I come say goodbye? Oh, yes. I wish I'd seen as much of you as Luther has of Anne. It was a lovely party, Anne. In case we don't see you again, I hope you're very happy where you're going. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, David. Bye. Everybody wants to get away from Luther. Animals in the zoo. The animal collects the animal. If you weren't so drunk, I'd be very tempted to knock you down. Come on, man. It's time you went home. No, listen to me. He collects people. Did you know that? Yeah, like the zookeeper. Animals in the zoo. The animal collecting animals. Come on, please, Matt. They're, they're getting away, aren't they? Your friends are getting away, Dick and Terry. It's funny, isn't it? Everybody wants to get away from Luther. At least they're friends of mine, which is more than I can say of you. Friends! Pets, more like. Sorry about that. Whenever Matt gets a skin full, he always goes at poor Luther like a drunken terrier. He's going to have one hell of a head in the morning. Yeah. Well, we better be going too. 
Thank you for a splendid party. Sad it's to say goodbye. Oh, come on, we mustn't get morbid. Well, I've said goodbye and thank you, so we won't stand on ceremony. <laughs> we'll just go. Well, I'll see you during the week. Oh, of course. See you soon, then. Well, I certainly hope so. Now, come on. Do that. Right, thank you. Finish all this in the morning, okay? Oh. Am I glad that's over? Well, that wasn't so bad. I don't know what got into Matt. Like you, he doesn't care for Luther. Can't say I blame either of you, really. Well, it's sudden change of heart. Hmm. I used to think he was a a kind of snake charmer. He's not. He's a kind of snake. What's caused this startling decision? You. When we had that fight the other day, I thought afterwards you were quite right. Besides, he's in his mid-forties and quite good-looking. And you're 28 and gorgeous. Yes, I am. So there really isn't any comparison. Oh, oh. yeah. Hank Prentiss. It's Matt. Matt? Has everybody gone? Go? Yeah, Matt, we're just gonna go to bed. Could you come around and see me, please? It's very urgent. No? Can't wait till morning? Listen, Hank, I know you think I'm drunk, but look, do I sound drunk? I'm perfectly sober, and I need to talk to you now. So, please, Hank, come around. Yeah, well, listen, can't we talk over the phone? No! Matt here and he wants me to go see him. What do you think of that? Now? Hank. Hank. Look, Hank, it's very important. Okay. I'll be there in about five minutes. <laughs> yeah, you better make it ten. <laughs> Come around to the French windows. I I'll let you in. They mustn't see you. Okay. I'll be there in about ten minutes. Well, what's the matter with him? I don't know. Sounded kind of desperate. I'll wait up. Oh, I won't be long. in a minute. Uh, you, you were drinking brandy, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Small one. What's this all about, Matt? I expected to find you climbing up the walls. Here, take that down. You'll need it. Tonight. You've got to take Anne with you and get out now. I'll come with you. Uh, you can drop me off in town. I've got all my things packed. If they find out, I've warned you, and they will. Wait a but... minute. Now, who? If who find out? Warn me of what? Well, can't you guess? No, I can't guess. Are you all right? You had a heck of a lot to drink at my place tonight. Less than you think. I'm quite sober and perfectly sane. I've also had enough. 
Things went too far the last time. I can't go through this again. Okay, but stop talking in real estate. Just tell me straight out what's wrong. And maybe we can work out whatever to do about it, if anything needs doing. Luther, he's bored again. You're talking nonsense, Matt. I want to get home. Man's waiting up for him. Listen to me. Luther's bored. He fancies your wife. He wants you out of the way. You've got to take Anne and get out while there's still time. Or what? Or he'll hang you from your own belt, as he did Dick Parker. Or fill you full of sleeping pills, as he did Terry. You better explain that. There isn't time. Explain it. All right. Sit down. You remember when I said he likes collecting people? Yeah. Well, that's when it started. You said hang Dick Parker from his own belt. Well, I'm telling you. He's a rich man, Luther. Most things he wants, a new car, a painting, a yacht, he can buy. But well, there's no fun in that. It's too easy. People. That's not so easy. And it's much more fun. Like hanging a neighbor when the weekend gets dull? Almost. You can own a Gainsborough. You can burn it if you want to. A racehorse, you can shoot it. Or you can own a person. You can sleep with them. Or you can make them do things they don't want to do. And then you can watch them doing it. Well, that's what Luther did. He told Dick to hang himself. And we all stood around and watched him doing it. Luther said, hang yourself. And he said, yes, sir, and did it? We drew lots. Dick picked the marked one. I think Luther fixed that. We were all around at your place. At first, Dick laughed. Tried to make out it was a joke. And he turned to the rest of us. We were so relieved it wasn't us. He didn't have much choice. He got drunk and did it. And we watched him. Oh, no, Matt, that's impossible. It... Yeah, I thought so, too. How? Why? Why? To cure his boredom. Have fun. That and power. You see, he, he started with little things. Uh, poker. And then, we, then it was strip poker, because that's more fun. Then uh, parties. Then costume parties. And uh, uh, parties without costumes. Uh, swapping partners was easy after that. And uh, um, blue movies and photographs. And then a holiday for six of us all together. And Teddy was in love with Luther, but she was with somebody else. Power, you see? He can make people do things they don't want to do. But you could have said no. Oh, by then it was too late. There were photographs, letters. But you weren't breaking the law. No, not at first. At first it was fun to start with. Weren't doing any harm. And he... He thought of variations. They were against the law. Then... There was an accident. We picked up this girl in Soho. Told her it was a costume party. She was Joan of Arc. Luther was the head of the Inquisition. We tied her to this stake in the garden. First, she seemed to enjoy it. Then, Luther put a match to the fire. get rid of the body. 
Okay. We go to the police. No. Don't you understand? They never believe you. Look, this highly respected around here. And even if they did, they'd have to make investigations. That'd take time. And they'll catch up with him sooner or later, Please, man. But the important thing is you haven't got time. He means to do something about you soon, tonight or tomorrow. That's why we've got to get out where we can. Okay. It sounds incredible. But I believe you. Come on. What's the matter with me? I still don't understand why me. Well, he summoned some of the others. Me too. I said I couldn't go. He doesn't like losing people from his collection. Don't forget Terry. Even if it... Even if it was suicide, what did he have to do with it? Well, after you two went home, we went upstairs to Terry's bedroom. We just sat around and didn't say anything. Well, she got scared and she began to plead with Luther. Luther handed her a bottle of whiskey and found her sleeping tablets. Then he told her some things about herself. That was pretty horrible. When she finished crying, she took some of the sleeping pills and had a couple of drinks, and then she finished the sleepy pills, and then she passed out. What had she done to him? Or any of you? Well, she talked too much for one thing. Too much brandy, I guess. What's gonna happen? I'm not certain. But whatever it is, it won't be nice for you or any of us. And still up. Shh, quietly. They may be watching the house. Come down by the side, just in case. There's someone in the playroom. What are they doing? They're celebrating a black mass. Wait! darkness as we dedicate ourselves to thee turn we beseech thee this blood to wine turn this blood to wine accept from our hands this gift of death and give us life accept this gift of death and grant us life take the victim we dedicate to thee as a symbol of our love Come to us, O Lord of Darkness. And a victim, Hank. Stop. 
Sarta. No good, Hank. There's nothing you can do. I laced your drink with chloral. You... You... Yes. Luther needs me. When he gets bored, I think of something new. Exciting for him to do. We didn't quarrel this evening. That was for your benefit. So you trust me. Luther always wanted to celebrate a black mass. He just never had the right victim. Anne knows too much. She might have spoilt it for the rest of us. Hank, can you hear me? We're going to take her downstairs and place her beside her. And then we're going to set the house on fire. It'll seem like a terrible accident. Don't worry. You won't feel a thing. Not a thing.